Don't think too hard, handsome. See you later. Got some business to take care of. See you later. I went into the remake of Resident Evil 4 with quite a bit of trepidation, as not only is the original one of my all-time favourite games, but also due in part to my immense disappointment with how the Resident Evil 3 remake was handled. It was then to my pleasant surprise that Resident Evil 4 was a pretty faithful and enjoyable remake, with my disappointment mostly being around the few areas that were cut, and how Leon was written and portrayed, compared to his original counterpart. It's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? The one thing that I didn't talk about at all in my original review was the character of Ada Wong. Mostly because there wasn't that much to say, since her role in the story to me felt even smaller than in the original, especially with the Separate Ways campaign being absent at launch, but also because a rather loud portion of the Resident Evil fandom decided to be completely normal and sent a whole lot of gross vitriol towards Ada's new actress, and I didn't want to attract any of that negativity. This is bullshit! Sadly, this has happened before, as Ava Njogia received a similar outpour of hate over him playing Leon in that admittedly awful film, Welcome to Raccoon City. Look, you can dislike someone's performance all you want, that's fine. I've made it no secret that I'm not a huge fan of Nick Apostolidis as the older Leon, but if your response to an actor's performance in something is to bombard them with hate to the point that they disable their social media accounts, I don't know man, maybe you need a new hobby. And don't get me started on the clown shoes who actually think these shitty AI voice mods are somehow an improvement and not just completely disrespectful to both actresses. It's pathetic. Anyway, now the Separate Ways campaign is finally here, and having now played through it twice, I can confidently say that there is quite a lot to like about this DLC. You know, aside from the obvious. Sorry, but following a lady's lead just isn't my style. The Separate Ways campaign was an additional piece of content that was exclusive to the PlayStation 2 release of the original Resident Evil 4. You know, before the game was eventually ported to every console in existence like Skyrim. It allowed you to see some of the events of the game from Ada's perspective, offering clues as to her motives and the future of the Resident Evil story, and it was a lot more interesting than the odd Assignment Ada minigame from the original GameCube release. Completing it rewarded you with bonus costumes for Leon and Ashley, with Ashley's suit of armor making her invincible and too heavy for enemies to carry her away, essentially making the game devoid of challenge for those who complained about Ashley being too difficult to escort. You also unlocked the completely broken and overpowered weapon, the Chicago Typewriter. The main issue with Separate Ways was that it essentially was just a glorified asset flip, with Ada trekking through all the same locations as Leon in slightly different orders, and it wasn't until near the end of the campaign where you got to see any new areas, like this massive battleship sequence in Chapter 4. It was also incredibly short, taking only a couple of hours to beat. And bizarrely, in the HD remaster, all the cutscenes are still the low quality FMVs from the PS2 version. But nobody remembered to roll out my red carpet. This remake of Separate Ways is an improvement on the original in almost every way, as it's a lot longer with 7 chapters now instead of 5, adds a lot of brand new areas to explore, and offers a lot more depth to the story. Which is why I can't quite understand how some people are complaining about having to pay 10 bucks for this DLC. When, back in 2005, the only way to play Separate Ways was to buy an entirely brand new copy of Resident Evil 4, and potentially a PlayStation 2 as well, if for some reason you only owned a GameCube back then. An interesting choice. Oh, I mean it in a good way, of course. Separate Ways mixes things up right from the get-go, as the campaign now starts off the day before Leon gets there, and sees Ada rescuing Louise Sarah from the castle as well as introducing one of the biggest new changes from the original, in the form of the Black Robe, who essentially is Ada's own version of the nemesis from Resident Evil 3, that shows up periodically throughout the campaign to harass her, and there's also a new subplot revolving around Ada also being infected by the Last Plagueis. Are you angry? 
You're angry. Playing as Ada isn't entirely all that different from playing as Leon. The core gameplay mechanics are fundamentally still the same, with the remake's new parry system still being incredibly fun to use, and Ada does get a couple of exclusive weapons, like her own stubby shotgun and the explosive crossbow. I also think it's quite telling of just how addictive the parry system is in the remake once you get the hang of it, because I found myself accidentally trying to do it when I went back to capture some additional footage from the original game. You must already feel the effects, eh? The main new addition is her grapple hook, which is utilised a lot more than the original, where it was basically only used to access a select few hidden areas. Now here in the remake, Ada's grapple hook is used consistently throughout the campaign as a means of traversing across the environment, with some really slick looking animations as she slingshots all over the place. It can now also be used in combat. If you're a certain distance away from a staggered enemy, Ada will now grapple that enemy and launch into them with a flying kick that can also knock any other enemies in range too. One thing about this that did disappoint was the inconsistent sound design with the attack. Most of the time the impact sounds really lackluster. Crap. Crap. Better. I mean, I guess it makes sense since Ada is wearing heels and not steel cap boots like Leon, but I think it still sounds better whenever the punchier impact sound triggered instead. Damn. A really cool detail is that if an enemy is standing above a grapple point, Ada will automatically launch into an attack which is always immensely satisfying and a great little design choice. You can also unlock an upgrade which allows you to grapple enemies' shields out of their hands, saving your precious ammo, so make sure you get this upgrade as soon as it's available. The grapple hook is also utilised during a few of the campaign's chase sequences, like one early on where there's a couple of grapple points that can help you bypass some enemies and put some distance between you and the pursuer. But I don't like it when men play rough. Obviously, Ada will trek through a bunch of the same locations from Leon's campaign. That's a given due to the nature of the story, and they even retained some small details from the original, like being able to hear Ashley crying inside of the church. But easily the most interesting and enjoyable aspects of Separate Ways is in the way that it incorporates the new areas into its design, with some of these new additions actually being content from the original Resident Evil 4 that was absent in Leon's campaign in the remake. There's that whole sewer area in the castle where the original first introduced in the Vista Doors, which is now suitably a lot fouler looking in the remake. That sequence on the cable car in the village has been repurposed as a set piece on the island, which was nice to see, and that iconic laser room sequence, based on the first Resident Evil movie, makes its return here too. They even managed to find a way to reincorporate that trap with the giant drill machine from the original. This way looks promising. For me personally, the coolest addition was the fact that they brought back the boss fight with U3, which, as I said in my original review, was one of my favourite monsters from Resident Evil 4. So it was great to see how they repurposed the fight for Ada's story. And there's also a few entirely new sequences added to separate ways that keeps things exciting. Like one particularly intense scene in an abandoned laboratory that I'm not going to spoil here. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, uh. <laughs> in terms of the story itself, I think almost all of the changes made are for the better. I've never actually cared that much about Ada as a character in the past, which is probably why I feel pretty indifferent about Lily Gao's performance as Ada. I think she did fine. Is she as good as the original actress? No. But I still don't think her performance was as bad as some people make it out to be. Are we all just forgetting how Steve sounded in the original Code Veronica? Sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up! All of the new scenes with Wesker were interesting, and it's pretty obvious I think at this point that a remake of Resident Evil 5 is in the works. Although we really need that Code Veronica remake first, since that game really establishes Wesker as a proper villain, and I just need more Claire content. One thing that struck me as an interesting change from the original was that this DLC seemed to imply that Krauser was working solely for the Los Illuminados in the remake, compared to the original where he was a double agent working with Wesker too. This might be a detail I missed back when the remake first launched, but either way it makes me want to see a remake of Operation Javier from Darkside Chronicles even more now. You knew each other? More or less. Maybe it's about time you told me the reason why you're here. 
Overall, I almost can't fault the Separate Ways DLC, since you get such a substantial amount of content for the reasonable asking price, and to my surprise, I actually felt compelled to play through it again after I finished it, due in no small part to the extra costumes you unlock after you finish the campaign, with both her undercover outfit from Resident Evil 2 and a redesigned dress that pays tribute to her original outfit from Resident Evil 4. It would have been nice if they had included Ada's prototype outfit too, but I'm sure modders on PC will be quick to rectify this certain inequity. I'm going to rectify certain inequities. Before I forget too, I also finally checked out the new rendition of the Mercenaries mode that was added a while back, and it's actually quite a bit of fun. Retaining that same frenetic intensity, elevated by the revamped controls and mechanics of the remake. The new Mayhem mode that you can trigger after filling the Mayhem gauge is also a fun addition, which increases your damage output and speed, and when used appropriately can help you lay waste to the tougher enemies, as well as giving you a bunch of bonus points. And I was pretty proud of myself for getting an S plus rating on my first attempt. Don't think too hard, handsome. In a lot of ways, this Separate Ways DLC has improved my overall feelings towards the Resident Evil 4 remake as the inclusion of most of the cut content from Leon's campaign now makes the whole project feel like a great remix of the original game, and it's now probably going to rank a lot higher on my top games of the year list. Anyway, those have been my thoughts on the Separate Ways DLC for Resident Evil 4. If you enjoyed the remake, then it should be an absolute no-brainer for you to pick this up, as it really feels like an essential part of the entire Resident Evil 4 remake package, and it's honestly one of the best DLCs I think I've played in a long while. As always, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you're feeling generous I have a Patreon linked in the description. Until next time, stay safe out there everyone, remember I've got some rare things on sale stranger, and I'll see you all in the next video. Come back anytime.